ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு மை யூடியூப் சேனல் லாஜிக் மெடிக்கோ டுடேஸ் டாபிக் ஃபார் டிஸ்கஷன் இஸ் எம்ப்ரியாலஜி ஆஃப் த லிப்ஸ் ஆல்சோ கோல்ட் அஸ் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் த லிப்ஸ் ஸோ இன் திஸ் டாபிக் வில் ஸ்டடி ஹவ் த லிப் இஸ் கோயிங் டு டெவலப் ஸோ வாட் ஆர் த ஆப்ஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் ஃபார் டுடேஸ் டாபிக் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் த அப்பர் லிப் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் த லோவர் லிப் அண்ட் வாட் ஆர் த கஞ்சனேட்டல் அனாமலிஸ் அண்ட் த ரீசன்ஸ் ஃபார் த சேம் request before the starting of the topic kindly subscribe to my channel and press the bell button and share this videos with your friends for a better learning so let's start with the development of the lips before going to the actual topic you just have to know what are the parts of the lip there are two lips upper lip and lower lip so this is the upper lip and this is the lower lip this depressed area in the upper lip is called as a philtrum this depressed area in the upper lip is called as a philtrum because it appears like a cupid bow depression okay so the other portion will be called as a lateral portion of the upper lip there is nothing such depression in the lower lip in the earlier part of embryology wherein we call the primitive mouth after the formation of the head fold there is one pericardial bulge so this is the primitive mouth location it is also called as stomatodium stoma refers to mouth okay so the lip formation happens around the primitive mouth or the stomatodium it is between the developing forebrain bulge and the pericardial bulge so what happens from the forebrain bulge a projection comes downwards that is forming the forehead and the nose it's called as fronto nasal process it's a median process meaning a single process coming from above above the stomatodium and there are a pair of processes coming below the stomatodium they are called as mandibular process so this and this there are two mandibular process so above the stomatodium there is a single fronto nasal process below the stomatodium or the primitive mouth there is a pair of mandibular processes so this pushes the pericardium down into the thorax the mandibular process otherwise initially the heart is there in the neck region Isn't it interesting? So this fronto nasal process, what happens further? Because of the one more bulge coming from the mandibular process, the dorsal, this is the posterior and superior border of the mandibular process, there is one more projection which is coming and that is called as a maxillary process. This maxillary process is squeezing the lower portion of the fronto nasal process. You can see that it squeezes this area. otherwise our eyes are oriented like a buffalo or a bull like this laterally because this maxillary process grows medially it squeezes the lower end of the fronto nasal process proof your nose is bulging forward because of the squeezing of this maxillary process hmm? isn't it interesting the fronto nasal process later develops the lower end of it develops a pit it's a pair of pits it's called as a nasal pits you can see further the maxillary process is growing medial pushing the or narrowing the fronto nasal process with the formation of the nasal pits there are two projections which are seen on either side of the nasal pit medially we call medial nasal process whereas laterally we call it as lateral nasal process so with the formation of nasal pit the fronto nasal process is now renamed in the lower part as medial nasal process and lateral nasal process you can see the maxillary process is further growing medially bringing the eyeball which was laterally oriented towards the anterior plane or forwards you can see that clearly also you can see the mandibular process as united with one another separating the stomatodium from the pericardial bulge you can see that here also see the mandibular process as united with one another separating the stomatodium or the primitive mouth from the pericardial bulge so further the maxillary process grows medially and first unites with this process so what is this process on the outer aspect of the nose if you are told lateral nasal process then it's a correct answer so first it unites with the lateral nasal process here when it is touching this lateral nasal process a thin area of the ectoderm will get rolled inside to form a solid cord of cells which connects the lacrimal sac with the inferior meatus of the nose or the lateral wall of nose it brings the tear film 
from this lacrimal sac into the nose that's why when we cry the nose is becomes stuffy because the tear fluid enters the nose so that part is called as nasolacrimal duct so when does it form when the maxillary process touches the lateral nasal process nasolacrimal duct is formed between the two okay further the maxillary process grows further medially so first, first it was touching the lateral nasal process now it is touching the medial nasal process so you can see that clearly it is touching the medial nasal process and both these medial nasal process will give one projection a swellings it's called the globular swellings you can see one tiny bulge here from this medial nasal process and one more tiny bulge from this medial nasal they are called globular swellings both these globular swellings will unite with one another to form the philtrum of the upper lip or the depressed area of the upper lip the remaining portion of the maxillary process contributes to the lateral portions of the upper lip i hope you are understanding this so if not i'll show you one more time this is the philtrum of the upper lip it's formed by the globular swellings from the both the median nasal processes the lateral portions of the upper lip are developed from maxillary process so the philtrum so the globular swellings of the medial nasal processes the lateral portions from the maxillary processes the mandibular process grows medially this is in the initial stage only cutting off the connection between the primitive mouth or the stomatodium from the pericardial bulge when it grows and touches one another then it forms mandibular process of right side and the mandibular process of left side they both will come and join to form the lower jaw also contributes to the formation of the lower lip so what forms the lower jaw and lower lip it is nothing but the mandibular process of one side uniting with the mandibular process of the other side okay this lower lip development is extremely easy okay now come to the congenital anomalies of the lips first thing is cleft in the upper lip you can clearly see in this picture there is one gap exactly in the midline that's called median cleft lip why this happens you can clearly say that it's because of the failure of fusion of the medial nasal process of one side with the medial nasal process of the other side so that is the reason for cleft exactly in the middle of the upper lip since this is common in hare or the rabbits so it's also called as hare lip so this is called as a median cleft lip cause for this is failure of fusion of the two medial nasal processes next one you can see here there is a gap here just below the right nostril of this patient so this gap which is there just below the nostrils is only on one side okay why is this gap you can see this green color is maxillary process the maxillary process has failed to unite with the medial nasal process of one side so this is called as unilateral cleft lip and this cleft lip is just on one side if the same thing happens on both the sides hmm, then both the maxillary process has failed to unite with the medial nasal process then it is called as bilateral cleft lips where beneath each nostril there is a cleft or a gap in this case the medial nasal process have united to form the depressed area that is a philtrum but on the other side of the philtrum you can see the lateral portion is not complete this is called as bilateral cleft lip when the maxillary process of both the sides fails to unite with medial nasal process in the midline it results in bilateral cleft lip next cleft in the lower lip this is the gap in the lower lip lower lip is formed by this is very easy mandibular processes so when the upper portion of these mandibular processes do not unite with one another then there will be cleft in the lower lip this is extremely rare but possible and the cleft in the lower lip and the upper portion of the mandibular processes on either side fails to unite it causes cleft in the lower lip now cleft jaw this is common only in the lower jaw because it is made up of only two processes that is mandibular process when the two mandibular processes completely fails to fuse with one another there is not only cleft in the lip but also cleft in the lower jaw cleft in the lower lip cleft in the lower jaw it's called as cleft jaw right up here now the embryo or the fetus appears like one 
three jawed animal okay upper jaw lower jaw is become two in number mm -hmm. this is extremely rare but possible next condition congenital anomaly is macrostomia so what is macrostomia see initially once the formation of maxillary process has taken place the angle of the mouth will be wide that is in the initial part of embryology later they have to fuse with one another to shift the mouth position into central or the angle of the mouth is shifted more medially that is a normal mouth so what happens if at all there is a failure of fusion of the maxillary process with the mandibular process that results in a large mouth so that is called as macrostomia stoma refers to mouth macro means big cause for this failure of fusion of the maxillary process with the mandibular process which creates the angle of the mouth to be more wider than actual so that is called as macrostomy what happens when there is excessive fusion so it's called microstomy when there is excessive fusion between the maxillary process and the mandibular process the angle of the mouth is shifted from normal position to very very small mouth will happen so that is called microstomia it resembles a fish mouth this is due to excessive fusion between maxillary with mandibular process this is one more congenital anomaly microstomia or small mouth so in in summary the development of the lip the development of the upper lip takes place from two things that is basically medial nasal processes they are only two in number they join to form the filtrum of the upper lip maxillary processes they are right side maxillary process and left side maxillary process so totally if anybody ask me upper lip is developed from how many processes i will tell them four processes they are the two medial nasal processes which joins to form the filtrum of the upper lip and the lateral portions of each side the right side and the left side they are formed by maxillary process so totally there are four processes if any one of these four processes fails to unite with one another that is only cleft lip next development of the lower lip summary it is very easy lower lip is developed from the two mandibular processes right side and the left side below the primitive mouth so if it fails to unite there is a cleft only in the midline there can be only one cleft and that should be in the midline failure of fusion of the two mandibular process on the upper margin if the entire mandibular process fails to unite it's called as cleft in the jaw okay next congenital anomalies can be cleft lip so whenever we mention cleft lip it's usually in upper lip by default it is in upper lip it can be of various types median cleft lip that is the cleft lip ex exactly in the center resembling a hair h a r e or a rabbit that is due to failure of fusion of the two medial nasal processes lateral cleft lip when the maxillary process fails to unite with the median nasal process there will be lateral cleft lip if this happens on one side that is called unilateral if it happens on both sides that means both the maxillary process has failed to unite with the medial nasal process of both sides that means beneath each nostril there is a gap that is called bilateral cleft lip then come to the next one the median cleft lip in the lower lip it's extremely rare condition but possible that is due to failure of fusion of the upper part of the both the mandibular processes this is extremely rare mind you okay but it is still possible the next condition is microstomia when there is excessive fusion of the maxillary process with the mandibular process resulting in shifting of the angle of the mouth more medially ultimately forming a small mouth or a fish mouth like thing is called microstomy microstomy failure of fusion of the maxillary process mandibular process results in macrostomy now these lips are very important structures which are used in articulation of few words like for example p you can't pronounce p without using lips try it if you want these are called as labial words you can contribute in the comment section with respect to labial words unilabial words where only one lip is used bilabial words where two lips are used kindly contribute in the comment section like and share this video with your family and friends don't forget to press the thumbs up button if you have made a good learning and share this video with your friends once again thank you for watching this video subscribe to my channel if you are not yet done and press the bell button 
you don't press the bell button you don't get the latest notification thank you once again